Hello and welcome into this week's belated edition of the NASCAR Xfinity Series Rewind Show right here on Racing News Now. As always, I'm your host, Garth Allen. Thank you once again for joining me today. If this is your first time catching a Racing News Now video, consider going down below and hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell for notifications so you don't miss a thing going forward from RNN. On today's edition of the Xfinity Rewind, we are looking back at Monday's Lily Diabetes 250 from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Yes, I said Monday. Uh, if you weren't paying too close of attention to things this weekend, everything got rained out from Indianapolis this weekend. Both the ARCA race from Lucas Oil Raceway on Friday night, as well as Xfinity on Saturday and Cup on Sunday. The Xfinity and Cup race both got pushed back into Monday after Tropical Storm Gordon moved through. And the ARCA race got postponed until October 6th. So we're, we're running a little behind uh, with things this, uh, this weekend as obviously with the rain pushing everything back, that pushed all the shows back. And then we had some technical difficulties getting things done last night. Uh, if you've been keeping an eye on the channel, you saw that the Cup Rewind went up a couple hours ago. Uh, later than I would have liked for it to go up, and this is going to go up later, that, a lot later than I would have liked this to go up, but I, not much I can do when the editing program is not working with me like I want it to and things are not coming out right. So uh, we seem to have all of that figured out now, and uh, hopefully... Uh, we don't have any more problems like that. But anyway, we'll get into your results here for the Lily Diabetes 250. Justin Allgaier picks up win number five on the season. He has so much momentum going for him right now in the Xfinity Series. It is unbelievable. Five wins on the season now for Justin Allgaier as we have one race remaining until the 2018 playoffs. I think he has solidified himself as the championship favorite for this season. He's got so much momentum going right now. Um, I just hope he hasn't peaked too early. That's that's the real concern right now is he's had a lot of momentum recently. I just hope he doesn't fall off as we get later into the playoffs. His teammate Tyler Reddick also seems to be uh, hitting his stride at the right time. Reddick locked himself into the playoffs after winning at Daytona back in February, then hasn't really done a lot for most of the season, but a third place finish last week in Darlington and second this week at Indy. Tyler Reddick seems to be finding his stride at the right time as well. Junior Motorsports uh, looking like they're going to be fairly strong in the playoffs. Ryan Blaney in the 22 car this week comes home in third. Chase Elliott, his final race for GMS in that 23 car this season, comes home in fourth. And Daniel Hemrick rounds out the top five. Daniel Hemrick picked up the Stage 2 victory. Rest of your top ten were Matt Tift, Christopher Bell, Austin Dillon, Chase Briscoe in the 60 car this week, and Brandon Jones. 11th through 20th, uh, we see Ross Chastain down here in the 12th position. Uh, another good finish for him. Uh, he did finish in front of Michael Annette, and that is the important thing. Annette having some... Uh, mechanical issues, uh, but I think Ross Chastain would have finished in front of him nonetheless uh, with how they were running. So in terms of the championship picture, that's, it's looking more and more solid now for Ross Chastain. Uh, next two weeks, he is in the 42 car for Chip Ganassi Racing. He'll be back in that ride. Ryan Sieg trying to do anything he can to get into the playoffs and outrun Ross Chastain. Couldn't quite do it this week, 13th. Same thing for Jeremy Clements there in 14th. 21st through 30th, we see Ryan Truex down here, three laps down in the 22nd position. Your stage one winner, John Hunter Nemechek. 25th out after an accident, uh, he completed 90 laps in this race, so 10 laps off the pace, getting caught up in an accident late in the race. Uh, and and if you haven't seen it, you need to go back and see the end of stage one. I'm not a huge fan of this package, to be completely honest, uh, with what they were doing in the Xfinity series with the restrictor plate, but it did make for an exciting end to stage one as they went Four wide for the stage one victory across the line. 
that I will give them credit for. That was really exciting. I, but, again, I'm not a huge fan of this package. Ryan Priest also getting caught up in an accident, 28th on the day. Same thing for Cole Custer caught up in an accident, 29th. Michael Annette, as we mentioned here uh, on the 31st through 40th last page, uh, he had some mechanical issues out uh, around the halfway point there at lap 51. Ty Dillon caught up in an accident. He was in the three car this week, 33rd. Austin Sendrick also caught up in an accident. He came home in 34th. He was in the 12 car this week. Elliot Sadler also caught up in an accident. He was out early. Uh, barely 20 laps into the race, 35th for Elliot Sadler. And with Elliot Sadler getting taken out that early, and with Justin Allgaier winning the race, that uh, almost locks up the regular season championship for Justin Allgaier. I don't know that he has necessarily locked it up yet, but uh, he has got it very close here with one race remaining in the regular season. All right, so we'll head over to the media center now. We'll see which top finishers on the day had to say after Indianapolis. Well, uh, all year we've we've had speed, but we've never been able to really fully grasp uh, the potential of the weekend as a whole as a team. And uh, whether that's been mistakes on pit road, a lot of it's been mistakes I've made on track that have put us behind. Um, we've been fast, but we haven't been able to put together finishes. And uh, these last two weeks have just um, been what this team's really all about and that's you know executing and, and we have speed we just got to execute and the last two weeks we've done that and we finished third and second so uh, you know big picture uh, Las Vegas is going to be about the same thing uh, it's about going in there and uh, walking away out of there with the top five top ten get the most out of your weekend and don't overstep it and uh, for me in this race today I just I wanted to make the move but I didn't want to make it with ten to go I didn't want to make it with with six or five or four to go I wanted to make it on the last lap that way it could kind of come down between me and Justin and the win wouldn't go to another organization. But uh, it just didn't play out that way. I had the run with two to go, and that would have been the time to take it. But uh, I, I still just was uh, just worried about costing the win for, for, for myself or him. So I just wanted to make sure I was uh, in, the, in the best position possible, and I just didn't quite feel good enough about it to, to make that move. You know, I've been fortunate enough to win at some of the most awesome racetracks uh, across the country. And... Um, Never in a million million years did I think growing up, you know, sitting in the grandstands here, um, that that winning at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway was a possibility. To be able to do that, to be able to to um, to have the day that we had, no practice. Um, you know, th these guys do a fantastic job of of being able to to provide a race car that when you unload off the truck, um, you just know that it's going to be fast. And I knew within probably two or three laps that uh, we had a great shot at, at, um, at, at not only a good finish, but maybe even a race win. So to take Dove Men Plus Care um, to Victory Lane, the Unilever brand, um, what they do for, for not only myself at, at Junior Motorsports, but for, for all of Junior Motorsports is, is truly special. Um, to put a Camaro in Victory Lane here, I followed that pace car around there um, all day, and, and it was like, man, I, I, was, I was falling in love with the pace car. And um, then to, to be able to put a Camaro in Victory Lane here, it's just, it's just truly special. So. Uh, again, hats off to the guys. You know, uh, hats off to, to Tyler Reddick and Chase Elliott. Both, both were huge helps today in the race and in trying to, you know, keep ourselves out of trouble. But but also too to be um, in the in the fast lane and in the right spot. And you know, things just worked out the the way that we needed them to pretty much every time. And and uh, very thankful for that. And I'm um, definitely blessed to to do what I love to do and, and and do it with a great team. I mean, Jason mentioned it, but you know, this race team is nothing short of fantastic. And uh, whether we whether we go next week to Las Vegas and, and um, clinch the regular season championship or we go to Homestead and win the championship, um, what we've been able to accomplish this year as a race team is truly incredible. All right, so let's take a look at your playoff grid before wrapping up here tonight. And uh, speaking of the regular season championship, we talked about that uh, before we headed over to the media center. Justin Allgaier currently has a 49-point lead over Cole Custer in the overall point standings right now. While that's not clinched at this point, it might as well be, because uh, 59 points is the biggest swing that you could have in one race. Uh, max points for a win would be 60 points. That would be winning the race and both stages whereas you would get one point for finishing 40th, so it would 60 and one point, that'd be 59 points, would be your biggest swing you could have in one race. So technically, Cole Custer 
could still win the regular season championship. Christopher Bell technically could still as well. He's 52 points off of Allgaier. Daniel Hemrick also technically could. He is 55 points back. But all of these guys are so far behind Justin Allgaier that even though it is technically possible, it's going to be very difficult for them to do that at Vegas this week. Not impossible, but very unlikely. Elliot Sadler, though, 69 points back, has definitely uh, eliminated himself from contention for the regular season championship after uh, his accident on lap 22 at Indy. Uh, so, and the regular season championship is big as that uh, gives an extra 15 playoff points headed into the playoffs. Uh, not that... Justin Allgaier needs any more playoff points. He has 24 at this point, but it it does allow for a pretty substantial playoff point swing. Now, as we look down here at the cutoff line, the cutoff line is now Austin Sendrick and Michael Annette. Austin Sendrick having more problems at Indy uh, out early from an accident. Uh, so Ross Chastain has now moved above him into the 11th position. The cutoff line, though, is now 57 points. As we said, we were talking about Justin Allgaier and the regular season championship. The biggest swing you can have in one race is 59 points. So technically, Michael Annette still has a mathematical shot at pointing his way in. But there's not much room for error there. It would literally have to be Michael Annette wins the race, both stages, and Austin Sendrick finishes like 40th or 39th. Um, Sendrick has crashed out of the last two races, so technically that is possible. Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily rule that out. Uh, but Michael Annette winning the race in both stages, he's just not shown the performance thus far to tell me that he can do that at Vegas. I would love to be proven wrong. I don't see it happening. Um, so, uh, that being said, that all gets erased if he does win the race, though. It doesn't matter if he wins both stages, if he wins the race. So, technically could still win his way in at Vegas. Again, though, I don't really see it happening. Uh, we'll see what happens at Vegas, but I think at this point, unless something weird happens at Vegas, I think we've got our playoff grid set. It's just a matter at this point of who wins the regular season championship. It's probably going to be Justin Allgaier at this point. Not necessarily going to be Justin Allgaier, but probably will be Justin Allgaier. Um, and then how all the playoff points stack out as we head into the playoffs uh, to to line up that playoff grid. So the Xfinity Series, the last series um, to set their playoff grid as they only have a seven-race playoff, two rounds, and then the championship four at Homestead. Uh, so a little bit shorter of a playoff than what the Cup and Truck Series have. Like we said, that'll be uh, decided next week at Vegas as to who is in the playoffs. We're pretty well locked up at this point, but not necessarily. Some things might change at Vegas. We'll have to see. But I think that'll do it for us tonight here on the Xfinity Rewind Show. Uh, pole position coming up here uh, as soon as possible coming up after this. I'm recording that immediately after this, so it'll go up pretty shortly after this does. Uh, admittedly, there's not a lot for pole position this week. IndyCar and F1 both had the week off. ARCA wasn't supposed to have the week off, but uh, thanks to Tropical Storm Gordon, uh, we all went to uh, Lucas Oil Raceway on Friday night and sat there in the rain and nothing happened. So uh, that'll be October 6th, like I said earlier. So ARCA technically ended up having the weekend off. So all we have for pole position tonight is the Cup race and the Xfinity race. It should be a real quick recap of the weekend in and out, uh, probably... Uh, probably not more than a couple minutes long, to be honest. So uh, that'll be coming up after this as well if you just want a quick refresher on what happened uh, on Monday. Not really this weekend, but what happened on Monday. So uh, if you haven't done it already, go down below and hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss a thing from R&N going forward. We will be at Salem on Saturday, Salem, Indiana, 
for the ARCA Racing Series Throwback Weekend, the Fall Classic 200 at Salem. Should be an exciting night of racing. And hit that big thumbs up button if you like the video. It is much appreciated when you do. So with that, this has been the NASCAR Xfinity Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen for Racing News Now.